Hello and welcome to our tutorial. So this is just um, we're going to kind of go back over what we were doing in class and um, there were bits we didn't finish so we're just going to have a look at how to build um, a little corridor here with a door that I'm going to open using a trigger. So I'm going to press play here and here I am in my game world so I can look around I can move forward and when I do I've triggered a door that will open so that's um, that's what we're trying to achieve and um, we'll just look at it again from maybe the opposite point of view so we'll press play and when I don't move um, the door isn't open and then I, if I saunter forward I'm in collision with a, a cube um, and then it'll open the door so we're going to go through how I did that and how it works and show you how to set it up. So I'm just going to flick into Blender here. So this is um, the corridor in Blender. Uh, I'll show you very quickly how I made this. So if I go into rendered mode here. Um, so this is my corridor. So I've got a, a wall, a wall, ceiling, floor. And i got a door. So these are if i'll show you very quickly i'm just going to add a um let's move that over there and add a plane so out of the plane go into edit mode press u and unwrap the plane um then go into say shading mode here um we'll look at this uh, and I added material, so let's call this uh, test. And this test material, um, I'm going to. I know I've unwrapped the plane, so I'm just going to add in. So I'm going to go add texture, image texture, and I'm going to go open. And we'll pick um, this one here, which is the bricks. So we're going to pick a texture map and hit open. And go from color to color and there's my image there so that's how you get uh, an image in um, now in Photoshop what I've done is if I just close that one there I'll show you uh, so yeah, I open my this box about the water meant open the brick but it doesn't matter um, I, I want to make two more images out of this I want a color image a diffuse image and then I want to go filter uh, 3d generate normal map which takes a couple of seconds on this computer and you can see here I've got my uh, my normal map and basically this is uh, how many bumps there are like how smooth it is um, how much of the grain do we see um, like how bumpy do you want it to be so that's one image so it's a cancel there so I would save that as an image and then the other one I would have made was I would have gone into hue and saturation and removed the saturation make it a black and white image and then after it's black and white, I would have gone into levels and made it uh, kind of a really high contrast, so something like that. And you'd end up with a black and white uh, image. So let's just bring them in. So I'm going to add in another image texture, and this one is going to be um, the specular map for how shiny things are. And I can punch that in there. And I need to tell it that it's non-color data that we're using. And then finally, for the normal map for how bumpy it is, I added in another image map. And I hit open. And I brought in this uh, normal map here for bumps. But you can't just connect these across. Well, you can, but it won't work. Um, so you need to add in a, a normal map. So I need to go from color to color. But again, tell it I'm not using color data. I don't care what color the bricks are and then from the normal map I get to go to the normal map and if I just go in here and I look at this if I increase the strength of my normal map here you see nothing okay and that's probably because I have no lights so I'm just going to add in a light very quickly so I'll add in a point light and reduce its intensity and then if I click on this, if I, so you can see it's completely smooth, and then I can change this value here, the strength value, and it'll change 
the appearance of bumps on this object. So that's how I added um, these images uh, onto uh, the different surfaces. And then in terms of the door and its animation, so in class what we did was we made a door and then we made a, uh, a bone and then we parented one to the other. So we selected the door and then we selected the bone. We went control P and we pressed selected bone. Uh, and then after that the door kind of moved and we repositioned it. And then this bone here is gonna go into pose mode. Uh, what I didn't do in class and what we should have done is made two animations. So I'm just going to go to the animation tab here and show you what I did. So by default when you open this it's in what's called a dope sheet. And the dope sheet shows you all animations. So if I had 10 skeletons here it would show me the animations for all 10 of them. But what I'm actually interested in is this thing here called the action editor. And what I've done is I have on frame number one I've pressed the I key insert um, keyframe on rotation and then I have gone up to frame number 50 I rotated this 90 degrees and I inserted a keyframe here and what I've done is I've called this animation open I have another animation here called closed and it doesn't have it just has one keyframe which is on frame one and it's the door closed if I wanted to add a third animation for example I can hit plus here add a new animation and we'll call this um, half open. Now half open is going to start closed and then I'm going to go to say frame number 50. I'm going to go or Z and I'll just open it a little bit to there and then insert a keyframe on rotation. So now I have three animations. I have my closed animation so that you know when it plays nothing happens because there's only one keyframe which is the door being closed I have a half open animation so I can animate the door opening like that or I've got my fully open animation which is the one that we were playing in unity so after I've done that after I have saved uh, or I've uh, created the animations here on this uh, in the action editor I literally just go file save uh, and then I exported an FBX file um, now I'm sure in future iterations of unity uh, or maybe even at the moment I can bring in a blend file directly in um, but because blender is in this sort of um, you know beta stage it's not fully ex or fully finished yet as 2.8 um, I don't think unity has full support for it yet so uh, when you bring in a blend file into Unity, it's converted to FBX anyway, so you might as well just do it now. Uh, and the one thing to remember when you're exporting an FBX file is, um, let's go into object mode, is to delete the lights and the camera. Uh, well, you don't have to, but if you don't, they'll appear in Unity as a light and a camera. So um, delete them and then export the FBX file. So I'll just save that. Okay, so in Unity, <coughs> what did I do? Well, in Unity, I went uh, import new asset, and I imported the FBX file, and I made a little folder for it. There it is there. Now, when I imported the FBX file, I didn't do anything to it particularly. Um, I can click on animation here, and I can have a look at it. So I've got a... a I made a new animation here just for illustration purposes, but I've only got two in this one, closed and open. So if I press play here, you can see the closed animation doesn't do very much. And if I press on to open, I can see that this actually plays the open animation. So the FBX file is working. So then I dragged and dropped that into my scene. Um, and there it is there. And just have a look at what's in this. I have two animations and I have a whole bunch of very badly named um, objects. Now, I had made three materials in there. I'd made one for the floor, uh, which is also the same in the ceiling, one for the door, which is wood, and one for the walls. And hence we have these here. Now you can see they don't look very good. I haven't done anything with them, I haven't tried to fix them. Because what I did in Unity was I created a new folder called Textures. I created new materials, so I literally went right-click, create material, 
and I called let's just create a new one now and just for illustration purposes so create a material we'll call this test and then what I did was I said okay I want um, I have three images to go with each one of these so I'm going to let's say we we turn this into the wooden one so there's the wooden texture so you drag that into the first slot here and you can see that that's the wood is on uh, on the sphere. This next one, metallic, I'm going to put the spec map on that one, which is the very kind of black image. And that's going to determine where it shines or how it shines. And I've also got the smoothness um, slider here um, to use with it. So you don't want it to be too shiny or, you know. And then finally, my normal map for the bumps, I put that in here. And now you can see I'm shiny and I've got bumps as well. So that's how you set up your materials in Unity. So you right click, you go create material, and then in your new material, you drag the images that you would have used in Blender um, into these um, little uh, squares here, and then that you can set it up. And then literally at that point, then you just pick an object. So let's say, um, this what's that that's my wall here so the wall on the right so if I take this test and I put it here oh it's the other wall so you can see that, that wall is now made of uh, wood and it's got all of the properties that I've made in on this here so if I make this less shiny or more shiny you can see the consequences of that over here so I'll just leave it like that just to for illustration purposes so I brought in my FBX file, I made three materials, and then I applied the images to them, and then I dragged and dropped those materials onto these individual parts of the FBX file. Then what did I do? Well, I made this here, which is an animator controller. So let's go make a new one of them. So I have one here called door, so I'll create a new one. So I create animator controller, and we'll call this one test. Now, by default, you've got nothing there. You've just got uh, no, you no animations. So I want to bring in my closed animation, and I want to bring in my open animation. Now, one of them is orange, and that's because that's what will play first. So if I wanted the open one to play first, I can go set its default layer, but actually once when the game starts, it to be closed. And then what I need to do is set up transitions between these two. So I right-click and go Make Transition, and link this and right click on this make transition and link back now um you can have loads of animations you can have walk jump climb fire you have 10 different reloads um death animations etc so you could have lots of these here so each one's going to have like transitions um spidering off to lots of different um, blocks uh, and you're going to control um, you know how it transitions from one to the other so in this instance here it's quite simple so when I go from the door is closed to the door is open I need to be able to control I need, I need a switch basically so and they're called parameters so I'm gonna put in a parameter and I'm gonna put in a boolean parameter and just to remind you boolean basically means it's true or false yes or no and we'll call this um, again test and over here then, and this is important, you can't just put it here, we have to set up this uh, transition. So I have to say, when test is true, play the open animation. And then for this one, when test is false, transition back to closed. Okay, so that's how this works. So uh, now what I've done with my other one here, door, I've used the word open. So if I click here, it says when open is true, it plays the open animation. And when open is false, it'll go back to being closed. So now all I need is a couple of scripts to um, trigger these, to access them and trigger them. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I've made a cube here. Um, and we did this in class. So literally I right clicked and went 3D object cube. And I turned off the mesh renderer, so it's just a, a normal cube. Uh, and then on its box collider, I turned on is trigger. 
because that's what we're going to we're going to walk through this box we're not going to have any physics um stop us moving so we want it to be kind of like a ghost so we turn on is trigger and then i've added this script to it called door control so let's have a look at that script so i've also made a folder um there's mono develop so door control let's see what this does um, okay so first of all I've declared a variable and that's gonna be my door so over here you can see if I click on door trigger I've got this um, variable here so I can drag any object I want in there but the object I, I'm gonna send a message the message I want to send I want to send it to the corridor why do I want to send it to the corridor because that's where the animator controller is and by the way you need to drag the animator controller in there so you can see my one says door so this test one I could drag and drop that in there now that'll stop it working probably but I, so I'll go back to my original one so on my script I've got a variable so I'm going so this is the object I'm going to send a message to so I say on trigger enter collider biffy so this is referring to me I'm if I collide with another object and if that other object has the tag player then send a message to this object here and the message that I want you to send is the message open let's have a look at that so here's my rigid body controller now we've used these before they're in standard assets under characters first person characters prefabs and I dragged and dropped that in there okay this is my character and I've got the tag it normally it by default it has no tag so I've put the tag player on it so if I'm hit with an object that has the tag player then send a message and the message to send is open and wh who am I sending that message to well this object here door okay so let's go back in here uh, so the door I'm sending it to I've dragged and dropped that in here and I'm sending that a message saying um, you know open so on my corridor I've got another script called door open and this is receiving the message so let's have a look at that and this has two things in it um, or three things in it but I could get away with not using that one um, so this has an animator and if we look down here um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to access this animator here the door animator okay <coughs> and what it's saying here is at the start animator get component animator so it's getting this component here so it wants to access this and then it's saying void open so if I change this to say you know hello so send message hello then this would be hello so whatever this word is it becomes a function in the other script so I'm gonna run this function and what what's this function gonna do well we've got an an our parameter called open so it's gonna say set open to be true and when it does that when open is true we'll transition from the closed animation to the open animation so let's have a look at that in reality so the script that's receiving the message is on the corridor the object that's sending the message is this cube and the object that's triggering the message that has the tag player is my camera now it isn't a trigger if it was a trigger then it wouldn't work two triggers won't interact so this is just a normal player so when I press play I can just sit here for a while and the door won't open because I haven't collided with um, the cube and then when I move forward the door has opened now I can't see the door opening so let's just make it easier on ourselves so let's add 
a light. Um, and we'll add a point light. And we'll put it there. And we'll reduce the amount of light that's coming out. Okay, so let's do it again. Let's press play. We move forward, and then we can see that the door is opened. Okay, so that's what we were that's what I was trying to get done in class, but we ran out of time. Um, it's not easy. Um, it's definitely not easy if you don't know how to program. Um, but you don't have to worry about that because I'm going to give you the scripts that you need. So I'll give you both of these. You just need to kind of uh, start thinking about um, making animations in Blender, having a character that'll have multiple animations on it, and when you import it in here, they will appear like this, and then you'll drag and drop them over here, and then you'll set up transitions. You might have more than one parameter. You might have a walk, a run. If like, you know, if run is true, play run animation. If walk is true, play walk animation, etc. Um, and so this stuff here, um, whatever we need to do, I'll be providing that for you in terms of scripts. So um, I'm going to ask you to try and do that. I'm going to take this project, this entire project, and I'm going to put it up in our resource folder that we share. And um, if you have any questions, just send me an email. Okay. See you soon.